today it is the last lecture in the series of uh, lectures on arithmetic operations and arithmetic unit design. Uh, today we will be talking of floating point operations. So, when uh, numbers cannot be represented as integers, you represent them as floating point numbers and uh, we will see how one could do the usual arithmetic and other comparison operations on floating point numbers. So, we, we have been talking of uh, primarily integer arithmetic, we also talked about logical operations and uh, other operations. Uh, I will first of all talk about why we need floating point <coughs> numbers, uh, what kind of representation we have and then we will work about uh, the hardware unit for carrying out these operations. So, first what is the need for floating point numbers, how we represent them. Uh, I will talk about a standard representation which is IEEE 754, uh, then define the concept of overflow and underflow in case of floating point number which is different from that we have in integers. <coughs> How operations are carried out, we will talk about primarily add, subtract, multiply and divide and uh, talk a little bit about comparison as well. Uh, the issue of accuracy is very important in floating point unit. Uh, how we can get best accuracy by using reasonable cost that will be discussed. There are some special numbers which need uh, special care, we will talk of that. And uh, finally, I will conclude by uh, talking of what kind of provisions are there in processor like MIPS. So, first let us look at why we need to go beyond the integers. Uh, <coughs> we, we are familiar with different data types as we encounter in programming languages and also in the world of mathematics. We talk of integers uh, which is actually a subset of rational numbers, which is a subset of uh, real numbers and they are subset of complex numbers. So, so it is a large space of uh, numeric world and integer is only a, a small subset. <coughs> so, how, how do you go beyond integers? Uh, that, that will be the topic of today. Uh, we, we need to also uh, take care of situations when the numbers are very large in terms of their values. Okay. One is that you, you may like to represent something which is not quite an <coughs> integer, let us say 7.4 which is neither 7 nor 4, uh, but on the other hand there is also a need for uh, representing values which are extremely large or extremely small, particularly in scientific domain uh, we have to talk of huge distances. For example, in astronomy if you are uh, looking at distance between uh, uh, let us say Pluto and Sun, uh, this is 5.9 into 10 to the power 12 meters. Okay. So, you would not like to represent that as an integer. Uh, it is not that you are interested in uh, uh, values, uh, even if your accuracy requirement is limited, you, you are not looking at fractional values but the number is so large that uh, integer representation is not the suitable one. On the other extreme, if you look at quantity li like mass of electron which is 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 28 grams, again uh, it is a uh, so small value that uh, you, you will either have to scale it uh, to that extent or think of a different, different representation. So, <coughs> How do we represent fractions? That is one question and how do we accommodate large range? That is the second part. So, representing fraction means uh, you, you want something which has integer part and there is uh, a part which is non-integer. Uh, also, they, they could be you, you may be looking at uh, non-integer values as rational numbers. So, for example, uh, you have rational numbers they can be thought of integer pairs. Okay. So, 5 upon 8 can be represented by 2 integers or if you have a number let us say like minus 247.09, you can represent this as a string, minus is one character, 2 is one, one character, 4 is another, 7 another and so on. Okay. So, each of these boxes which you see is a separate character. So, you can as a string you can represent uh, Num number which has uh, something to the left of decimal, something to the right of the decimal and appropriate sign. Or in uh, binary form you can represent 
uh, a number with a fixed position of the binary point. Okay, for example, look at this number string of 1s and zeros, and you might say that okay, here is my uh, binary point which is equivalent to which is the counterpart of decimal point. So, you you may not unlike this representation where you are using a character to represent that position, this position may be implicit. So, you would say that out of so many bits, uh, the, the point actually lies after the fifth bit from the right. Okay. So, uh, th th then you need to only worry about uh, the, the string of so many bits and the position of the uh, binary point is fixed. So, so, this could be considered as a fixed point notation. But uh, this representation, uh, although is okay, uh, it does not take care of uh, large range. So, to, to get large range, both uh, in terms of uh, extremely large values and extremely small values, you need what is called floating point, where uh, you have a fractional part which could be represented in any of the manners described above, and there is a base to which you can specify you can raise to a specified power okay so so it is this ability that you have a base and some power associated with it that you can work with large ranges you can have uh, positive power to represent extremely high values and negative power to represent extremely low values uh, the, the precision or the accuracy of what you are representing would actually come from this fraction part okay how many significant digits you have would come from this, whereas uh, the this power will take care of the range, right? So now we we must remember that uh, in all such representations where you are using a finite number of bits or digits, uh, you you are representing basically uh, values which are rational. Okay, to represent irrational quantities, you need infinite. Uh, length of storage. Okay, so we, uh, as far as uh, irrational numbers are concerned, we, we we would typically represent only a reasonable approximation of those numbers, and uh, all representation which are in finite number of uh, bits or bytes would be actually uh, representing rational number in some sense. <coughs> so now let's uh, go deeper and understand the meaning of uh, binary numbers where there is a point somewhere. Okay. So, for example, take a simple number 101.11. All right. So, there is a this is the integer part and there is a fractional part. What is the value of such a number? Uh, we are we understand very well the part to the left of the point 1 into 2 raise power 2, 0 into 2 raise power 1 and 1 into 2 raise power 0 corresponding to this 1, 0 and 1. <coughs> the the bits on the right of the point have a uh, weightage which is negative powers of 2. So, so this one here uh, has a weightage of 2 raise to the power minus 1 and the next one has 2 raise to the power minus 2. So, if you add now uh, all these bits with appropriate weightage which be which is a power of 2 positive or negative uh, you get this 4 uh, that this is of course 0 that gives you 1 that gives you 0.5 that gives you 0.25 and all put together we get 5.75 in base 10 right so uh, th this shows how you can actually look at a uh, binary fraction like this and uh, get its equivalent decimal value <coughs> on the other hand suppose you have a decimal fraction say 0 0.6 how do you get its binary representation so uh, here is the representation but uh, le let's go through the steps which will give you this so uh, the, the process is that you repeatedly multiply this fraction and uh, keep on collecting keep on multiplying it by 2 and keep on collecting the integer parts okay so you multiply 0 0.6 by 2 you get 1.2 so, 1 is the integer part and 0.2 is the remaining fractional part. 0.2 is again multiplied by 2, you get uh, 0.4. So, look at it as 0 0.4. So, 0 is the integer part, 0 0.4 is the fractional part. So, repeat the process, you get 0 0.8, 1.6, and uh, now 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.10, 0 0.11, 0 0.12, 0 0.13, 0 0.14, 0 0.15, 0 0.16, 0 0.17, 0 0.
since you got 0.6 it will again follow same step. So, uh, in terms of its binary representation you will get 0 0.1001 and this will repeat okay, just to show the repetition I have shown different colors. So, uh, now this is uh, this means that you repeat this till infinity, uh, but if you are talking of finite number of bits again uh, this cannot be accurately represented because you will have to truncate it somewhere right. Uh, so, so, therefore, uh, we cannot represent 0 0.6 exactly in binary uh, by this method. Of course, if uh, one of the things which I mentioned in the previous slide that a rational number you represent as a pair of integers. So, that could be done you could represent this as 6 and 10 okay. uh, that would be an exact representation, but that is not very convenient to work with. Uh, what is convenient to work with is uh, something like this but there is some loss of accuracy which we must keep in mind. Okay, now, let us uh, introduce the, the exponent part. Okay, so, you have some base and you raise it to some power and also <coughs> let us bring in the sign. So, typically a floating point representation would have uh, a, a form like this. So, minus 1 raised to power s, s takes care of the sign, s is either 0 or 1 multiplied by f, f is the fractional part. So, fraction is in some fixed point form that means, you have a string of bits and there is some position where you assume binary point to be there. Uh, the base here is 2, we are talking of binary now. So, 2 raised to power e, e is the exponent part. Uh, this f is the fractional part which is usually called mantissa or significant and e is the exponent part. Uh, this itself can be positive or negative, we have seen the need for both, okay. why we need positive exponent, why we need negative exponent. So, now uh, with this concept, the question is that uh, a given word of uh, memory okay, or a given register, how do you divide this into uh, three parts, that means how, how you allocate bits to s, f and e, s of course is straightforward, it re requires only one bit but how many bits for f, how many bits for e, there could be lots of options there. And also there could be lots of options as how you represent f, where do you assume the point to be right and uh, uh, how, how do you represent e, how, what about the sign of e. So, there are all these issues and there are, there are multiple answers. So, what has happened is that over a period of time, a standard has emerged which is uh, largely acceptable and today uh, most of the processors actually use that standard. Uh, so this is the IEEE 754 standard, IEEE stands for Institution of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. Uh, so, so this, this is an organization which apart from uh, publishing the scientific literature, they also uh, define various standards. Okay. So, this standard defines two floating point representation which are called single precision and double precision. Double precision naturally has a uh, larger number of significant digits. So, uh, the division of the word which is 32 bit is as follows, uh, the leftmost bit is the sign bit, next 8 bits are kept for exponent and the remaining 23 bits are for f or the mantissa. In double precision, we uh, not only extend the precision, but also increase the range of E. So, there are three additional bits given here. Okay. This small difference you will see makes uh, a big impact. So, you do not need to really increase too much here. So, 11 bits for E and the remaining bits of this word and another word. So, it is a total 64 bit representation for double precision. So, 20 remaining bits here and 32 of the next word together 52 bits are used for the f part or the mantissa part. Okay. Now, let us go into further details of how uh, e and f are represented. So, first let us look at f, f is the significant part or the mantissa part, uh, where in single precision case we have actually 23 bits. Uh, we assume the point to be on the extreme left and we also assume that there is a one sitting there invisible. Okay, so, so, there is an implicit one here, which, which means that the, the numbers 
here we are going to talk of will be 1 point something right. So, so uh, this, this would decide the range uh, as you would see that smallest number would be when it is 1 point all zeros and the largest value of f would be when uh, it is 1 point followed by all ones okay, we will see what it means. Similarly, in double precision again the point is to the left extreme and there is a invisible one here. So, invisible or implicit that means you assume that one to be there. So, if effectively we, we are having uh, 24 bits here one, one bit we do not have to represent explicitly. So, now what are the value ranges uh, naturally with uh, all 23 bit 0 the value of f will be 1 1.00 0 or effectively 1 and if you have uh, uh, getting back to this if you have all the ones here then what is the value it is uh, nearly 2 but not quite equal to 2 uh, it how much short of 2 it is uh, corresponding to a 1 in this position. Okay. So, if you take 1 point all ones and then add a 1 in this position uh, you will have carry going all through and you will get a 2 here. Right. So, so we are only slightly short of 2 and uh, to be more precise it is 2 minus 2 raised to the power minus 23 because that is the weightage of the last bit 23rd bit uh, it is equivalent to 2 raised to the power minus 23. So, you could say that f lies between 1 and 2 minus 2 raised to the power minus 23 or more approximately you could say that 1 is less than equal to f less than 2. Okay. So, we are not saying how less, but we, we, we know that it is nearly almost 2. Similarly, for double precision numbers uh, we except for 23 we in place of that we put 52. So, now this uh, this way of representing the floating point number uh, or, or the mentis of this is called normalized representation. So, uh, if, if the value actually falls beyond this suppose you are talking of uh, you want to say 4 uh, 5 into 2 raise power something. So, instead of saying 5 you divide by suitable power of 2. So, that the, the value gets in the range of 1 and 2. So, it will be actually 1.25 and you make the appropriate adjustment in the exponent. So, suppose you wanted to say 5 into 2 raise to the power 4 equivalently you could say 1.25 into 2 raise to the power 6. Okay. So, so, you divide here by 2 raise to the power 2 and adjust it by increasing the exponent. Similarly, if f happens to be very small you multiply it by powers of 2 suitably and decrement the exponent appropriately. So, so that the value always lies in the range 1 and 2 value of f always between 1 and 2. If it is exactly 2 you can divide by 2 and make it 1 and uh, adjust the adjust the exponent. Okay. Let us now look at e part or the exponent part uh, for sim uh, single precision numbers we have 8 bits here. Okay. We represent exponents with with a biased notation. Okay. The, uh, the signed exponents are not represented as 2's complement there is a reason I will come to I will explain a little later. So, the bias used here is 127 that means if your uh, exponent is uh, minus 126 okay. minus 126 plus 127 it will uh, appear as 1. So, the, the, the values these 8 bits actually can carry a value from 0 to 255. So, leaving the two extremes 0 and 255 uh, which are for special purpose I will explain that later uh, the, the real range is 1 to 254 okay. and uh, 1 corresponds to the most negative exponent 254 corresponds to most positive exponents and with the bias of 127 1 actually corresponds to minus 126 and 254 corresponds to plus 127. Similarly, in double precision numbers uh, the, the bias is 1023 and, and the range will go from minus 1022 to plus 1023 so, that is shown here the range in range of E in single precision is minus 126 to 127. Okay. We are excluding the cases when all e bits are 0 or all e bits are 1 that is <coughs> the two extremes are used for something special and we will discuss that later. 
Okay. Now, we have talked of positive and negative numbers, what about 0? So, z 0 would require actually all f bits to be 0, right? And, and we cannot assume an explicit 1 to the left of the decimal, to the left of the point, because uh, that would mean it is 1 point something, you, you, that range excludes 0. So, 0 again has to be treated specially. Uh, so, what we say is when f has all bits 0 uh, and e is also all bits 0, uh, sin bit is also 0, uh, th then it actually represents a 0 in floating point. Okay, so, floating point 0 a is also same as integer 0 in representation. Okay, all 32 bits are 0 uh, signifies a floating point 0. Uh, in principle, uh, any number which has f 0 and any value of exponent would represent 0. Uh, but that would correspond to multiple representation. So, we have a unique representation in IEEE 754, which is all bits are 0. So, now with this uh, uh, described, how do, how do we test uh, the numbers for being 0, non-zero, positive, negative, how do we compare? So, test for 0 as you can now guess is same as what you do for integer. So, so if you have a circuit which tests a number for integer 0, it will actually test for uh, floating point 0 also. Similarly, test for sign, test for being negative or positive uh, requires only uh, the sign bit to be looked at, which is same in, in the two cases, integer as well as floating point. What about uh, magnitude comparison? Now, magnitude comparison also turns out to be similar to integer because of certain choices we have made. Firstly, we have kept exponent part to the uh, left of uh, the mantissa part. Okay. So, uh, now if two numbers have same mantissa part, but one has a larger exponent, obviously that will be larger okay, because exponent has uh, larger weightage. Uh, see, uh, only if uh, okay, I, even if two numbers have different exponents, sorry, different mantissas, let us say A has larger mantissa than B, uh, but if B has a larger exponent, B will be larger. So, it is uh, exponent which is uh, more predominant and uh, in terms of significance, uh, its natural place is towards the left. So, so therefore, when you compare two floating point numbers, uh, treating them as integers and if you find that uh, exponent bits in one are larger than the exponent bit in the other, uh, then you do not need to really look at the mantissa. Okay, that is how it will happen in case of integer also. If some MSBs give you a decision about A being larger than B or B being larger than A, then you do not need to look further. And, and uh, another thing which helps in this is that uh, the, the bias representation. So, irrespective of the sign of the exponent, uh, this comparison will work out. Uh, if you have for example, two's complement representation, then signed comparison and unsigned comparison differ. So, now, now uh, we can do magnitude comparison of two floating point numbers, which means we are not, we are excluding the sign bit, uh, rest we compare as if we were comparing magnitudes of integers. Okay. In integers, we talked about overflow, we talked of uh, overflow, when uh, you are trying to get to a very large positive integer or very uh, very large negative integer. Okay, so if you exceed the positive limit or negative limit, you have overflow. Here we have additional concept of underflow. Okay, so uh, we if we look at the largest and the smallest positive and negative numbers we can represent, uh, you you would notice that there is a limit of uh, n values in both directions. So, you, you may have a number which is uh, which is larger than the largest positive number for example. So, that is an overflow condition, but if you have a number which is uh, not 0, but smaller than the smallest uh, floating point number you can have. Okay, it is too small to be represented in the, uh, in the given floating point notation, then it is uh, underflow. Okay. So, number is not 0 
but it can't be in integer uh, the, the smallest integer is 1 and you can represent that. So, there is no underflow, but here there is a concept of underflow which you must remember. So, now let us look at the extreme values. So, uh, we take the largest value of the mantissa which was 2 in 2 minus 2 raise to power minus 23 okay, or approximately 2 and largest positive power is 127. So, so basically it is uh, 2 into 2 raise to power 127 that that is the largest number we have uh, and 2 raise to power 127 turns out to be approximately 10 raise to power 38. Okay. So, in, in terms of uh, familiar decimal system that is the range we are getting we are we can go up to uh, <coughs> power 38 of 10. The smallest positive or negative integer. So, he, here as far as overall sign is concerned uh, that is a separate bit. So, so I am not writing separate range of positive and negative. So, uh, uh, just prefixing a plus minus sign with this. So, the smallest positive and negative value is uh, we take the smallest f value which is 1 and uh, smallest e value which is minus 126. So, so this can also be written as 2 into 2 raise to power minus 127 which means it is uh, 2 raise to power 2 into 10 raise to power minus 38. So, basically that is the range uh, powers of 10 going from minus 38 to plus 38. Uh, in, in the double precision, uh, here it is power of uh, 2, 2 raise to power 1023 which turns out to be 10 raise to power 308. Okay. So, it is extremely large number and uh, uh, which is good enough for almost all practical purposes. Uh, so, so, another thing you, you need to be concerned here is how many significant digits are there. Let me see if I have. Okay. Uh, another question is how many significant uh, digits you have. See in we have significant bits as 23 here and 52 here. So, what does it translate to equivalent decimal digits? Okay. So, so to, to get an idea of the precision of the number you are trying to represent, uh, you, you can actually uh, divide this 23 by log of 10 to the base 2 okay, and you will get the number of digits. Similarly, divide 52 by uh, log of 10 to the base 2 and you will get the number of significant digits. So, uh, <coughs> I think this will be something like 8 digits or 7 or 8 digits or so. Okay. Now, finally, let us come to how we perform operations on floating point numbers. So, first let us look at addition and subtraction. Let one number be minus 1 raise to power s 1 multiplied by f 1 multiplied by 2 raise to power e 1. Okay. So, s 1, f 1, e 1 are the three components of this floating point number. Similarly, there is the other one s 2, f 2 and e 2 and we are required to either add or subtract. Uh, now, before we can do this addition subtraction, we uh, we must bring the exponents to the same level. So, suppose e 1 is greater than e 2, okay, find out which is larger, let, let e 1 be greater than e 2, then we can <coughs> rewrite the second number in such a manner that its exponent is made e 1, we uh, do away with normalization here, uh, change the fraction part to f 2 prime, where f 2 prime is obtained by dividing f 2 with some power of 2. So, specifically 2 raised to power the difference of the two exponents. So, uh, now dividing by power of 2 actually in you can imagine that in hardware circuit it would mean that you are shifting right. Okay. So, you shift f 2 right by so many positions e 1 minus e 2 and corresponding adjustment has been done in the exponent, exponent has gone from e 2 to e 1. Okay. So, so, now you are in a position to add or subtract f 1 and f 2 prime. So, uh, depending upon what the signs are and what the operation is, you will be performing some uh, one of these operations, some or a difference. So, 
So, the result is uh, minus 1 raised to power s 1 sum or difference of these into 2 raised to power e 1. Well, by the way, this itself could be positive or negative and accordingly that might also change. So, uh, the, the logic for determining sign is not difficult to work out. Uh, what I like to point out here is that uh, when you do this, you may find that this is not normalized. Okay. This sum or difference might go beyond the range of 1 to 2 which we would like to have. So, uh, th uh, so, therefore, this operation has to be followed by normalization process. If the number has become too large, uh, shift it right and adjust the exponent. If it has become too small, shift it left and adjust the exponent in the opposite manner. So, here is uh, uh, not a detailed circuit, but a kind of block diagram indicating the, the, the flow of information as uh, it would be in a floating point adder come subtractor. So, uh, let us say we have these two registers holding the two numbers sign exponent and significant part. Uh, the first thing which will be done is compare the exponent. Uh, the, the the circuit comparing these is called small ALU because it is looking at only 8 bit operands. It computes the difference of the two exponents and that is the amount by which you have to shift uh, one of the significants so that the exponents get aligned. So, this is, this is called the alignment stage. Uh, here uh, there is a shifter which will perform right shift on one of the significants and that is selected by this multiplexer and uh, which one is selected is determined by this control unit. Control unit is guided by the difference which you have found out. So, uh, knowing whether E 1 is greater than E 2 or E 2 is greater than E 1, uh, one of the two will be selected here, other one will be selected to go directly and this big ALU uh, adds or subtracts the two significants or mantisas and you get the difference here. <coughs> okay. So, so this is this you could say is the first stage where exponents are getting compared. This is the second stage where uh, uh, the, the number with smaller exponent is brought at par with the one with large exponent. This is the stage where sorry, uh, this is the stage where addition or subtraction is done. This is the stage where normalization takes place. So, normalization would involve output of uh, ALU. Ignore these multiplexes for the moment. I will come back to this in a moment. Uh, this uh, output of the ALU may need to be shifted left or right uh, depending upon uh, how far you are from the normalized value. Okay. So, you need to bring it between the range of 1 and 2 and accordingly there will be an increment or decrement of the exponent which will be done uh, which is actually coming from here. So, one of the two exponents selected and passed on for increment or decrement. Now, after normalization uh, you need to do what is called rounding. So, rounding means you, you like to get to the LSB to the best of the accuracy. Okay. So, so, you may be throwing something uh, towards the right and whether you need to make an adjustment here or you, you can just afford to throw it. So, I uh, will come to this uh, shortly. So, you have some rounding uh, logic here which may further adjust the mantissa. It may need adjustment in exponents uh, and uh, after rounding off you may find that we have lost normalization once again. So, there may be another round of normalization. So, that is why these are being fed back and uh, multiplexer will select either the original value coming from top or after rounding and finally, the result can be placed in another register. Okay, so, this is the hardware for add or subtract. Uh, conceptually multiply operation is somewhat simpler. Okay. If you look at two numbers, this is one, this is second, the, the product can be obtained straight away. Uh, the sign of the result is exclusive or of the signs. Okay. If both are ones or both are 0, result is 0 and one otherwise. 
uh, the fraction part is the product of the two fractions and the exponents get summed. Okay, so, it is rather straightforward, there is no initial alignment which is required, but of course, uh, you may need to do normalization and rounding. Uh, the reason for that is this product of two values which are individually in the range 1 to 2, the product would be in the range 1 to 4. So, that means on the larger side it can exceed 2 and it may require one small adjustment. Okay, you may need to bring it down if it has exceeded 2, you divide it by 2 and uh, increment the exponent once. Divide is uh, similar, uh, two numbers same thing, uh, sign is determined exactly same way, the fractions get divided, the exponents get subtracted. Now, this uh, ratio of the fractions could lie in the range 0 0.5 to 2. Okay. So, it, it will not, not exceed 2, uh, because each one is in the range 1 to 2, but it can become small. So, you, you, you would, uh, you may need to normalize it here and again there is a, there is always a need for rounding off. So, of course, uh, before you do all that you need to check whether f 2 is 0 or not. So, you can proceed with this if f 2 is not 0. Now, uh, the question of uh, accuracy and issue of rounding off. So, wh when while doing the operations, for example, when you are aligning, you, you are shifting the number to the right, you are throwing off some bits. Okay. When you are multiplying two fractions, you have uh, two 32 bit or let us say two 20, 24 bits including the invisible one bit, you have two 24 bit uh, exponents or sorry ex, uh, 22, 24 bit fractions which you are multiplying the result would be as we have seen for integers result would be 48 bits in general. So, you, you have to now throw remaining bits and retain 24 bits finally. So, so there is a loss of precision in this process because you are working with finite word length and uh, of course, you, you, you have to have finite word length. So, some loss would be there, but you want to minimize the loss in the given number of bits what is the best you can do. So, it turns out that if you use a few extra bits for intermediate calculation and finally, do a round off based on those, then you can get to the accuracy which is theoretically possible. So, uh, these bits are called G R or S, G stands for guard bit, R for round bit and S for sticky bit. So, G and R are nothing but the, the next two bits after those 24 bits. Okay, we, we normally have 24 bits as seen externally. Uh, but suppose we had, if we had retained two more bits, uh, these are g and r. So, in, in the intermediate calculation, we retain those. Apart from this, we keep one more bit, which is called s bit and s bit is 1, if and only if any bit towards right of r is non-zero. Okay. So, s distinguishes, a, s is like a summary of the remaining bits, which we are throwing off and tells, it distinguishes the case, which is all zeros and case where there is some at least a single one. Okay. So, you can look upon the number as 1 point all this followed by 3 more bits g, r and s. Now, given these bits, given these additional bits which are, it, which are uh, kept in the intermediate stages, how do we perform rounding off? Okay. So, now uh, first let us look at g and r. Uh, and uh, just for relative sense, let us Im imagine that the point is uh, to the left of G. So, on a relative level, let us assume that the binary point is here actually. Okay. It, it is just for concept, uh, otherwise actually point is there. So, uh, G has a weightage of, in relation to this, G has a weightage of 0.5, R has a weightage of 0.25. Okay. So, when g and r both are 1, it is like 0 0.75 and you will round up, okay. you will add 1 to the LSB. Now, LSB means the bit to uh, the left of g. If both are, uh, if g is 0 and r is 0, it is a case when both are 0, I mean uh, it is a, uh, uh, it represents 0 to the right of uh, the point or uh, when r is 1, but g is 0, it corresponds to 0 0.25. So, 
uh, when it is 0.25 or 0 0.00, now you want to uh, throw away the the uh, the value towards right of the point. Okay, you want to round it down. Uh, when g is one and r is zero, it corresponds to 0.5. You are exactly in the middle. So whether you go up or you go down, in this case we look at s bit. Okay. So, so we, we want to get more information to be fair. If s is 1, that means there is something uh, which is non-zero towards right of r. So, so we can round up, okay, we can add 1 to LSB. If s is also 0, then we are dead at 0 0.5 and uh, which way do we go? So, now assuming that uh, uh, half the time we want to round up, half the time we want to round down and all numbers are <coughs> equally likely. Uh, the logic which is followed in IEEE 754 is that you round to the nearest even, okay, even in the sense of uh, this, be, this bit being considered as LSB. So, a 1 here means it is odd, a 0 here means it is even. Uh, so, if it is 0 here, you, uh, you, you leave the number as it is. If it is 1 here, it is like odd, you add 1 to make it even. Okay. So, this is the meaning of round to the nearest even. So, so you round in a manner that uh, the, the last bit, 23rd bit becomes 0. Okay. So, effectively what you are doing is you are trying to be uh, fair. Now, su such things are actually uh, important, for example, when you are dealing with the financial applications. So, if you, if you, if there is a bias in your rounding method, then um, over a period of time, uh, the gains may accumulate for one party and losses may accumulate for another party, which may not be fair. So, so you, you would like that uh, rounding up takes place half the time, rounding down takes place other half of the time. Okay. I mentioned that uh, some uh, codes for uh, exponents are reserved for special numbers. So, here you will see the entire picture. Uh, the, the first two columns are for single precision numbers and the uh, next two columns are for double precision number and the last one represents, last one indicates what object or what kind of number we are trying to represent. So, if you have everything 0, then it is a special case and it is representing a 0. When, uh, let me look at this, when exponent is at its peak high, uh, high uh, the highest value 255 and uh, mantis is 0, then it represents infinity. Okay. Uh, the, the, sign, the sign bit is also there, which could be plus or minus and it will represent accordingly plus infinity or minus infinity. So, now uh, what do programs do with infinity? Uh, when, when you are writing a program, uh, you can always check this condition. Uh, for example, at some point you let us say uh, reach a situation that the result is coming as infinity. Okay. How do you represent? You do not want to stop computation there, you want to represent infinity and proceed further. So, so you can write, you can express this in this way and uh, subsequent part in the program would understand that number is infinity. So, you, you, you will not try adding infinity to something which is not infinity and so on. Uh, so, so, this gives a method for doing so. Uh, the, the other combination, for example, suppose exponent is 0, but mantis is non-zero. Okay. Uh, this represents a denormalized number. So, so when underflow occurs, you can still proceed with, with your computations. You can re represent numbers uh, by doing away with the requirement of normalization, because uh, if you insist on normalization, then there is the smallest value, you cannot go beyond that. So, so you, you do go beyond that, you force your way beyond that, represent them as uh, denormalized numbers, but uh, you, you must know that now there is that invisible one is not there. Okay. Uh, this is the normal situation that exponent is in the range 1 to 254, mentisa could be anything and the last one is that exponent is 255, same as infinity but you have a non zero value so so this is uh, this is used to represent something which is not a number for example uh, 0 by 0 you can't say it is infinity 
it is something which is undefined <coughs> alright. So, there could be different situations which lead to number which are undefined and uh, by choosing some code here you can have program specific meaning of all those situations. Okay, finally, I uh, will uh, give a summary of the instructions which are there in the MIPS processor uh, to handle floating point numbers. So, first of all there are 32 floating point registers labeled as dollar $f0 to dollar $f31. <coughs> These are in addition to uh, the 32 registers we have for integer work and uh, actually this entire hardware which does floating point uh, activity is considered as a coprocessor. So, it is a companion of the processor whose specific whose special task is to work with floating point numbers. So, there are usual uh, operations add, subtract, multiply, divide, abs absolute value, negate okay, which can work on single precision data or multi precision or double precision data. So, you have two versions of each add dot s uh, and add dot d stands for single precision addition or double precision addition. So, like uh, integer MIPS addition uh, this requires three floating point registers to be specified. Okay, you, you would say uh, add dot s and then give three registers. Uh, when you are working with double precision arithmetic you, you need to specify register pairs. So, f 0, f 1 form one pair, f 2, f 3 form another pair and so on. There are 16 pairs. Then there are instructions uh, L w c 1 and S w c 1. So, this is load word, but we are also saying c 1 which stands for coprocessor 1. There can be many coprocessors attached with the main processor and floating point processor is considered as coprocessor 1. So, these instructions would load a word from memory into uh, the coprocessor 1 which is floating point unit that means one of these registers. So, you specify which register you want to load into and you specify one integer register in the usual manner to specify the address. Okay, so, there is a constant part 16 bit constant part and a, a base register. So, together they specify memory address store instruction is similar. Then there are uh, conditional branches uh, B C 1 T and B C 1 F. B stands for branch, C 1 stands for coprocessor 1 and T and F stand for true and false condition. Okay. Now, how do you determine the condition? You, you need to use one of these compare instructions to set the condition. So, imagine that condition is a 1 bit register or a flag which is set by one of uh, the compare instructions. So, so, in SLT for example, in SLT instruction the result of comparison was brought into one of those 32 registers, but here the result of comparison is brought into a separate flag which is tested by this. So, test for truth and test for falsehood. Uh, these two instructions do the comparison. So, C means compare, then uh, LT means less than S or D would mean single precision or double precision. So, L T could be replaced by L E, G T, G E. So, there are 6 different instructions for single precision, 6 for double precision. Then there are instructions for conversions. So, uh, because uh, you have 3 representations integer, single precision and double precision and you need conversions. So, suppose uh, you have uh, uh, a number 3.5, uh, it will have some representation in single precision, some representation in double precision, okay. so a 32 bit pattern or a 64 bit pattern and uh, there may be some time need for conversion or uh, conversion to integer that is take out uh, the integer part or if you have integer 3, you can convert to uh, floating point 3.0. So, these conversions could be uh, somewhat lossy. Okay, particularly when you are going from higher precision to lower precision, you may lose some information. Okay, so, uh, finally, what we have learned today is uh, we talked about range of values which we can handle, definition of overflow and underflow. We learnt how to perform various operations. Uh, we talked about accuracy, use of G, R and S bits for 
rounding off. Uh, we also looked at notation for some special numbers and finally, looked at uh, floating point operations given by different instructions in MIPS processor. Thank you.